The year is 216 BC. Hannibal just defeated the largest Roman army ever seen at Cannae, killing 50,000 Romans and capturing 20,000. This was a major blow to the city of Rome. To put it into perspective, about 7 million people lived under Roman rule in 200 BC. 3.5 million would be men, perhaps 1.75 million would have been of military age. So those 70,000 killed or captured accounted for 4% of the total manpower of the Roman Roman Republic. If we now say Rome had about 500,000 people and most of these men actually came from the city of Rome herself, it means the city of Rome would have lost about 10% of its population in a single day. This is scarring and it would leave the Romans fearful of what would come next. So why didn't Hannibal push his advantage and marched on Rome? Well, there are a few reasons why he didn't do this. Rome had good fortifications, Rome had two armies standing by, Rome still had a lot of its allies in Italy, Rome still had an army on the field, and Rome had Carthage under naval blockade. All of this would mean that Hannibal was in numerical disadvantage, didn't have supplies for a prolonged siege and didn't have support from home. All of this would have made the siege impossible. So how would it be possible for Hannibal to actually march on Rome? Carthage had three armies in Hispania and those would eventually flood into Italy just as Hannibal did. In our timeline, Publius Cornelius Scipio offered his services to the Roman cause when no one else would dare to do it and marched on Hispania. Eventually defeating the three armies, ensuring that Hannibal would not receive reinforcements. If we assume for a second that the Senate would not find a willing commander, or they would just send an inept commander into the fray, it is very likely that these Carthaginian armies would have flooded into Italy, doubling or tripling the Carthaginian presence in Italy. With such numbers, it would be possible to turn Rome's allies into Carthaginian favor and then supply this massive army to take Rome in a long siege. Or better yet, maybe these three Carthaginian armies would be able to lure the Roman garrison away and stop them from reaching the Italian plains, allowing for Hannibal to storm Rome. So on this hypothetical timeline, Publius Cornelius Scipius wasn't able to escape Cannae and died in the battle. The Senate wasn't able to find a capable general to meet the Carthaginians in Spain and just a year later Hannibal received reinforcements. Hannibal marches north to meet the other Carthaginian generals, Hasdrubal, Mago and Gisco, defeating any opposition. They capture any cities that would now begin to flip to the Carthaginian side and eventually march on Rome with a massive host over 100 100,000 strong. They would eventually be able to capture Rome in one of the bloodiest sieges in history. You can see a small recreation on Rome 2 that I recorded earlier this week. I think it looks alright with Rome 1 soundtrack, so check the card in the top right corner and do watch it, it's pretty cool. And then come back here. After a costly victory, most cities in Italy pledged their loyalty to Carthage, further crippling the Roman army's ability to maneuver and gather supplies. The Roman fleets lose their base of operations and soon Roman forces crumble. Carthage would now grow in influence and might, but it wouldn't rule by the sword. It would instead spread its culture slowly through trade and coercion at times. We can see this behavior prior to the Roman conflicts, though Carthage was no stranger to war. But they seemed to be more keen on indirect control over areas, as they were crafty politicians as well as renowned traders. The political landscape of the world would change drastically. I don't think we'd eventually see a Mediterranean-wide Carthaginian empire. I believe it's plausible that Carthage would hold influence among the Greeks and the Diadochi states like Ptolemaic Egypt, the Seleucids or Macedon for example and it would use this influence to further enrich its city by favoring those who were more favorable to traders from the west. The Diadochi Wars would continue to be very prominent throughout the next couple of hundred years until one of them would finally gain the upper hand and the new rising power on the eastern Mediterranean would once again threaten Carthage and their trade empire. Empire. Needless to say, features of our modern world might have never come to be. Christianity may not have spread as not only the Romans wouldn't be around to crucify people, there was no Roman infrastructure nor a unified political entity across the whole Mediterranean. 
In the Renaissance, there was a revival of Roman and Greek ideas, art and architecture, which in this timeline very likely wouldn't happen, as Western Europe for the most part wouldn't identify with the Greek ideals. I also believe that the less expansionist Carthaginians would have been able to forge an empire at least as durable as Rome, and perhaps even more durable as they wouldn't overextend at the pace the Romans did in our timeline. It may be that the Arab ascension could happen either way and topple the Carthaginian power in the west? Would Adela be able to defeat an economically powerful, secure or and politically resourceful Carthage? It just may be that Carthage would have been an extremely resilient nation had it passed the test of Rome. We will never know. I think so. What about you? How do you think the world would have turned out had Carthage won the Punic Wars? Share that in the comments below. I have been Mr. Turn and I hope to see you again on my next video. I hope you enjoyed this one and signing out. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitch and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much.